close your eyes and focus on the breath. And then remember to stay there, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. The remembering, that's mindfulness. Noticing what you're actually doing, that's alertness. These two have to go together. And they have to be strengthened, because we can learn all kinds of important things, useful things, and then forget them when we need them. And then what use is it? You want to have a mindfulness that can withstand your greed, withstand your aversion, withstand your fears, withstand your delusions. That means you have to practice it, you have to train it. And this way you create a refuge for yourself. The word refuge in Pali Sarana can also mean something that you remember. And this is precisely what your refuge is, is you remember what the Buddha taught, you remember the Buddha's example, and then you apply it to your life as it's happening. Not after the fact. All too often we say something and then it's not until the next day we realize that it was a big mistake. Or sometimes as it's coming out of our mouths that we suddenly rem remember it's a big mistake. Well, it's too late. You should remember it beforehand, before you open your mouth, what should and shouldn't be said. That requires really strong mindfulness and alertness to watch what's going on. Because you can remember some things, but if you can't apply them right when they're needed, Again, they don't serve much purpose. So as we're practicing staying with the breath, as if the mind wanders off, you catch it, bring it right back. Remember that this is why you're here right now, is to get some training in the mind so you can depend on the mind, that it can be your refuge. That way what, what you remember of what's right and what's wrong, like remembering the precepts, remembering the principles of how to be a good person, you need those when your emotions are really strong. And that's most often when we forget totally about what we've learned. It's as if we just dropped it on the floor and it shatters. So you, you learn about what's right, what's wrong, and then you try to apply it as you live, day by day by day. That's when you really get the most out of it. That's when you can become your own refuge. As the Buddha said, you make the Dharma the refuge and when he was passing away. He, all the monks and lay people were upset because the Buddha was going to go. Who could they depend on? He said, you've got to learn how to depend on yourselves. And you depend on yourselves by developing your mindfulness. And that doesn't mean just remembering, but also means remembering what should be done and then making the effort to do it. That's the third quality the Buddha recommends, is the ardency, that you really try to do this well. After all, it is your life. And who's going to look after your life for you if you don't look after it yourself? This way you've got mindfulness as your discipline, mindfulness as your refuge. And whatever good lessons you've learned, they'll be there when you need them. So if you find yourself discouraged, you sit and meditate and the mind wanders away, well, it shows you've got work to do. This is a skill that everybody should develop. It's not only for people who are natural meditators, it's for everybody to learn how to depend on themselves. Because we live in this world. And other people will take care of us up to some, some extent, but there's a lot that we have to take care of ourselves with. As John Sawat used to say, each of us has only one person, i.e. ourselves, that we're responsible for. We can try to influence other people to be good, but what kind of influence can we have if we're not good ourselves? So we have to remember, try to be mindful all the time. Whatever good things you've learned, remember them as you need them. As soon as you're about to open your mouth, ask yourself, okay, is this true? Is it beneficial? Is this the right time and place? All too often we open our mouths as the thoughts are coming out, and even before the thought is done, it's coming out of our mouth already. Well, that's speaking too early, and our mindfulness is too late at that point. Think things through and then speak. It's much better than having to speak and then having to think about it afterwards, saying, oh my gosh, what did I do? That kind of thinking is, is sad. Whereas the thinking that thinks beforehand is the thinking that's going to protect you. That will be your refuge. So try to use mindfulness as your refuge. We take the Buddha and the Dharma Sangha as our refuge. We say it over and over again, Bhutang Sonarangachami, Tamang Sankang Sonarangachami. We take them as our refuge when we remember them. Not just remember them, try to apply their lessons to our lives. That's when we become our own refuge. When you can be your own reference, then you don't have to depend on anyone else.